Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Salali Pop and this video is going to be another compilation of a bunch of different bikes that I really wanted to test ride at my job at Trek. But this video is different from the last one in that I personally built every single one of the bikes that I test rode in this video. So I'm really proud of that. But once again, before we move further, I did get my own GoPro finally and I'm having some audio troubles while I'm recording these test rides. So please bear with me in that. But I will try to fix that for my next video. And once again, so this video doesn't run too long, I am gonna jump right into those test rides and kind of discuss which bikes I'm going to be showing in this video before that. And one little thing I do wanna mention is that Trek has a ranking system for all of their stores. So for the month of September, our service department in Trek Bicycle Sacramento actually ranked number one in the entire world for service and that takes into account a lot of different things like the amount of bikes bill and turnaround time which is basically how fast we can return a bike to a customer once they bring it in for service. So our Trek store is basically just killing it right now and of course I'm so happy that I'm a part of a team that can do so well and hey this statistic is for the month of September which is pretty much right when I started working. I started working in August so maybe maybe you know i had something to do with that i'll take some credit for ranking number one in the world but enough of that let's go inside and i'll talk about the bikes that are in this video okay so starting off we have the 2021 trek 1120 which is a crazy looking bike for sure i'll just show some pictures i took of this bike while i was building it right now but as you can see there are a lot of interesting colors and designs like this trekking badge on the down tube and this particular bike is a size small. I'll also throw in a video of me building it next to a 2020 1120, just because it was cool to have both of them there at once. Next we have the Precaliber 20, which is awesome. And <laughs> then we have the Roscoe 7, pictured here in a size extra large. And then we have the Rail 7. Now the rail I test rode was a size medium, so it did not have a curved top tube, but I did also build a size small to show that it does come with a curved tube in smaller sizes. And the last bike I'll show in this video is the Fuel EX8 GX. We actually have a lot of these in the shop right now, and I got to build and test ride both colors of this bike. The red one was a size medium large, and the blue one was a size medium. And on a lot of these bikes, you'll see some blue pedals or something like that, and those are just test ride pedals since some bikes don't come with pedals included. I'm going to show you all of the test rides right now, and as always, thank you all for watching, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, this is so crazy. Today, I am test riding the 2021 Trek 1120. Now, this bike doesn't come with pedals, so I have some test ride pedals on there right now, but it has an insane drivetrain, the Shimano SLX, 10 to 51 tooth I believe it's just crazy it has a big climbing gear on there and these crazy looking racks and this awesome color scheme with a bunch of different designs as you can see right there uh, just a crazy bike it's pretty much the only stash that Trek still makes because this is based on the stash platform it has a dropper post oh this bike is just crazy guys both the racks in the front and the rear these 29 plus size tires because it is a stash after all and they're three inches wide basically a fat bike at this point but with 29ers instead of the common 27.5 inch fat bikes that you see like on the farley and things like that plus this full slx drivetrain that's just crazy as well pretty high spec there and this bike is not you know too heavy or anything like that which is what i was definitely expecting I'm actually going to quickly check how heavy it is right now. It's about the same weight as my Marlin 5 because it does have these racks and other stuff on it. Before all that stuff was on there, it was a bit lighter. This specific bike is in a size small. These SLX shifters are nice because you can shift with your thumb up or down. I mean, in all honesty, when I'm not really looking at the bike, I can't tell I'm riding anything too crazy. I mean, these, these big tires, I can hear the tires and it does feel, you know, a bit slower <laughs> than most bikes that I've test ridden so far. Um, but besides that, if I had my eyes closed, I would probably just think it's something like a Marlin. Maybe I would probably think it's a Roscoe actually, but I mean, obviously with the drivetrain, I wouldn't, but looking at this bike from the side, it's just crazy because you can see that full archway that they made to accommodate these 29 plus size tires. Just a crazy backpacking bike. 
We surprisingly have so many of these in the store. I didn't realize they were that common. <laughs> or maybe they're just common at Trek Sacramento, but we have three of them for some reason. <laughs> this bike isn't carbon fiber though. It is uh, Trex Alpha Platinum Aluminum, just like the Farley 5. So it is it's fairly lightweight, to be honest. Like this aluminum feels like as light as carbon or some lower end carbons at least. Yeah, I honestly don't have too much to say on this bike. Um, I thought it would have more, but it's not that different or surprising besides the, obviously the color scheme and the racks and the, the bags and the 29 plus size tires and things like that. But when you're riding it, it doesn't feel all that crazy. Like the Farley definitely felt a lot crazier than this bike. All right guys, so today I'm test riding the Trek Pre-Caliber 20. It's a pretty sick looking bike. Let me actually pull up and show you right here real quick. Yeah, I got that nice color scheme on there. It's a nice violet to uh, red fade uh, with a black base coat. It has some sparkles in it. It is actually a Project One color scheme. So, you know, had to pay an extra couple thousand dollars for that. I think it's well worth it though for a bike of this caliber, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> it's actually it's actually called the Pre-Caliber 20 because it's made for people 20 years of age and older, like myself. So it's a pretty intense bike right off the bat. You already know what you're getting into when you sign up for something like this. Very expensive bike, very well made. Got the got pretty state-of-the-art technology. Um, this bike actually comes with a kickstand as well. No bike I've ever owned actually comes with a kickstand, so that's a pretty nice upgrade. It actually also has a pedal brake. So you just go backwards and brakes automatically. Pretty high tech over there. Got a front brake as well, front rim brake for weight saving purposes. You know, disc brakes are too heavy. For a bike like this, super lightweight, you know, definitely, definitely lighter than my Marlin 5 for sure. Not really sure about how much. It's probably the lightest bike I've ever built. <laughs> All right, guys, I am test riding the 2021 Trek Roscoe 7. I actually really like this bike. On paper, it just seems like in my opinion, one of the best beginner mountain bikes you can get. If you're really trying to get into serious mountain biking, at least it has a one by 12 drivetrain from SRAM. It's got a huge 2.8 inch wide plus size tires, 27 and a half inch wide tires to get that nice playful nimble feel that still has a good amount of control on those trails. Still not that slow or anything either, or that heavy. It is definitely heavier than like, you know, Marlin or something like that, but nice wide handlebars, good grips. Nice Shimano brakes on there as well. Got the nice 180 millimeter rotor in the front. I like SRAM drivetrains a lot. This one is the most entry level, so it's not gonna be as nice as the NX or GX, but it also has a dropper post. This one, <laughs> this bike in particular is a size extra large. So I am unable to use this dropper post because it would throw me off this bike probably. Actually, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> yeah, I can barely <laughs> touch the pedals right now. So I'm gonna keep it lowered for the sake of this video. It's got 120 millimeter travel, lockout suspension for pretty much like everything you would want in a mountain bike at a reasonable price point if you're just a beginner, besides full suspension, of course, but everything you would want in a hardtail mountain bike, I feel like this bike has it. At least in terms of like trail riding, not necessarily cross country riding, cause that's more like the Marlins or Excaliburs, but this one's like the fun, playful one. You can just go anywhere with. It kind of encourages you to go off-road a lot. This actually was one of the bikes I was thinking about getting when I was originally purchasing my Marlin 5, but it was just a little too expensive for me as my first bike. But honestly, if you got the budget for it, I think this one's like a perfect beginner for what it is. I can't think of a single feature that I would want in a mountain bike besides full suspension that this bike doesn't have. So it's really nice. I mean, this bike is meant to be kind of the smaller, more nimble, playful bike when compared to the Marlins and Excalibur. So it already has smaller wheels, which helps to make it feel a bit smaller. So an extra large Marlin definitely feels a bit bigger than this one because of that. But this is just a beast of a bike. I really like it. We do have some of the Aloha green ones of this bike in, but I personally like the black one the most. And the cool thing about SRAM drivetrains, as I've mentioned in my videos, is that they allow you to upshift not one, not two, not three, not four, but five gears at a single time. So just listen to this. That's just all the way up there, easily getting up to the highest climbing gear. Pretty amazing bike in general. 
Okay, I'm gonna have some fun with it here. <laughs> I think anyone buying this bike will have a great time on it for sure. Guys, this is a $6,300 full suspension electric mountain bike. And it is, of course, the Rail 7. Now this bike is crazy, especially from a builder standpoint, like a mountain bike or like a, a bike builder standpoint. <laughs> this bike has front suspension, rear suspension, and they're both air forks, so you have to dial them in. It comes with a full tubeless ready setup, so I had to set these tires up as tubeless. And it comes with a dropper post and is an electric mountain bike. So definitely takes a while to build these bikes, but man, is it worth it after you're done because this $6,000 mountain bike, yes, it is $6,000, is just absolutely crazy. And this one's luckily in my size. I have it off the electric mode right now. It comes with a Shimano group set. I mean, it's a heavy bike, so off the gears, it surprisingly doesn't feel too bad. Some of the other electric bikes I've ridden feel pretty heavy. This one can still move for sure without the electric assist. Like, I don't feel uncomfortable at all on this bike. Touring. Oh no, that's just crazy. Crazy fast bike. Ooh, electric mountain bike mode just zooms into place. This has a clutched rear derailleur as well, so pretty nice. The shifting is super smooth, super fast as well. I mean, it better be for $6,000. You're getting what you pay for, right? But it's not even the highest spec bike in this range. This one still uses Alpha Platinum Aluminum from Trek rather than carbon fiber. I mean, it's still pretty lightweight. It's not bad at all, but like just, <laughs> Like this isn't even the carbon fiber series of this, of this bike. You can go even higher than this with the rail 9.7, 9.9. Just go absolutely crazy if that's around your budget. <laughs> I, I can only imagine what this thing feels like on a trail because I don't have any trails around me that we can test ride them on. And that would just make it way too dirty and things like that. But I mean, on the road, you can tell this is like a motorcycle, basically an electric motorcycle. It's probably the closest thing to that. And the dropper post and the dual suspension. Oh my God. Absolutely insane bike. Here is the 2021 Trek Fuel EX 8GX in a size medium large. This one is obviously in the red to uh, matte Neister black color. It has a dropper post on it, a SRAM GX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain. It's got this massive cassette in the back with the 52 tooth climbing gear on the very top 10 to 52 tooth right there descendant crank set have some test ride pedals on there it doesn't actually come with any pedals all right test riding the trek fuel ex 8 gx 2021 wow this is an amazing bike in size medium large just a tad bigger than what i should be riding that hub noise is great but this feels wow, this feels pretty phenomenal right now Wow, this is really cool. This does have Trek's knock block system on it. This drive train is pretty crazy because it allows you to upshift up to five gears at a time. That is pretty insane, honestly. This is actually my first Fuel EX build and first Fuel EX ride of any sort. I haven't actually ridden any Fuel EX bikes yet, but this feels pretty good. It has a 180 millimeter front rotor and a 160 in the rear. Good stopping power for sure, which is, I mean, obviously necessary for a bike like this. These SRAM G2 brakes have giant uh, brake fluid reservoirs. Just looks amazing. Definitely a lot of stopping power packed into this bike. It's nice and grippy. Has front and rear suspension, which is really nice. Got that lockout feature as well which is, yeah, that's rigid for sure. That works really well. Got the lockout feature on the the rear shock as well too. You know, let's just kind of ride this bike around. I'm gonna go up some hills right here.
shift all the way to that climbing gear. Try to make it up here. Oh, that is, <laughs> I am just, that is the easiest gear I've ever been in. Wow. I think that's a bit overkill actually, but it's definitely nice to have. Yeah, just looking at the bike, definitely a nice looking bike. A few EXs are pretty popular for sure. We actually have about 10 of these in the shop right now, <laughs> which is crazy. This is just one that I built. I need to try to go fast on this bike. It's still Alpha Platinum Aluminum from Trek, which is pretty light. All things considered. Yeah, overall, really like this bike. Here is the blue version of the Felix 8GX. I'm gonna put this dropper down real quick. This is actually a size medium, so it's exactly the size I would want on this bike. Um, I know I just showed you the, <laughs> the full test ride of the other one, so I won't bother with this one too much, but um, I'm just gonna show you the color on this one. It's pretty nice. Same color that's available on the Felix 5 and the 7, so they have this one on all of them. One thing I really like on this bike too is that it has the Fox logo in blue matching the paintwork. I'm actually liking this one a lot. Thank you for watching.